Now at 5 and streaming on CrossroadsToday.com, Bloomington residents are set to decide on the town incorporation initiative. Plus, more arrests are expected after a major cockfighting bust in Goliad. And a Yoakum World War II memorial receives a major makeover. For us at the Crossroads, we have a cold front coming. We can celebrate, but for the folks in Florida, they got major problems. We've got tropical cyclone number nine, likely to become a hurricane, likely to roll into Florida as a category three. We'll talk more about your weather coming up in a moment. Plus a home collapses, leaving two people dead and several others hurt. You're watching 25 News Now at five. Good afternoon and thanks for being with us. I'm Shauna Curry. Victoria police have identified the woman who died after a car accident on North Navarro Street. 74 year old Randall Miggy was driving a Chevrolet Blazer when his vehicle crossed the median into oncoming traffic. His vehicle then collided head on with a Jeep Grand Cherokee driven by Ashley Jett. The passenger in the Blazer 73 year old Sandra Miggy died from her injuries. Both drivers were taken to the hospital for treatment. The extent of their injuries is unknown. The residents of Bloomington will soon decide whether to incorporate their town. Danny Garcia, Victoria County Commissioner for Precinct 1, which includes Bloomington, tells us a petition that met all of the requirements for approval was submitted to the commissioner's court. A previous petition that included only sections of the community was rejected by Victoria County Judge Ben Zeller. Garcia says this new petition includes the whole town, not just parts of it, giving a better reflection of the entire community. All the documents were reviewed. Uh, the judge agreed that he had enough information and he felt comfortable signing off on that one. So that one uh, will be moved forward to the May uh, election. To go. Garcia says all registered voters who live inside the incorporation map of the community are eligible, eligible to vote in the May election. And this brings us to today's viewer poll. Do you agree with incorporating all of Bloomington rather than just parts of it? Yes, no, only certain parts should be incorporated or the town should not be incorporated at all. We want to hear from you. Scan that QR code on your screen or go to crossroadstoday.com slash vote to participate. Right now, an overwhelming majority, 97% um, of you feel that the entire community of Bloomington uh, should be incorporated. So continue to vote. We'll have the latest results on 25 News Now at 6. More arrests are possible after the bust of a cockfighting event in Goliad County. This actually all started back on May 11th when 63 people were arrested on charges of engaging in organized criminal activity, cockfighting, and unlawful carrying of a weapon. 45 vehicles, eight trailers, weapons, and money were also seized. Authorities tell us they are having trouble making more arrests because cockfighting season is over and they said after the raid, all of the participants scattered. The Victoria Independent School District and local law enforcement agencies are teaming up to address their response plan to a large number of threats to campuses as well as campus and student safety. They will be holding a press conference at one o'clock tomorrow afternoon in the boardroom of the VISD administration office. For those unable to attend, a live stream will be available on the VISD website. We will also be there covering that. Well, with Election Day just 42 days away, some local candidates are taking part in a candidate forum tonight in Blessing. 25 News Now reporter Trenton Whiting is live in Blessing with more. Trenton. <laughs> Texas House 30 representatives and candidates are meeting today in Blessing for a town hall Q&A meeting. The town hall begins at 6 p.m. and ends at 9 p.m. at the Blessing American Legion Post. Stephanie Bassam and A.J. Lauterbach are here along with Matagorda Sheriff candidates Aaron Green and Rick DeLeon III. Attendees can ask questions, register to vote, and meet some of the candidates they'll see on the ballot. The election is just around the corner and there are a few more important pieces of information for voters. The last day to register to vote is on Monday, October 7th. The last day to apply for ballot by mail is Friday, October 25th. Early voting begins on Monday, October 21st and ends on Friday, November 1st. The general election day is on Tuesday, November 5th. Reporting live, Trenton Whiting, KVU-TV, 25 News Now.
All right, we'll hear more from Trenton in uh, our other newscast this evening. A road closure for drivers in Victoria County to be aware of this week. Colettoville Road East will be closed to through traffic from Old Goliad Road to Colettoville Road at the church. The closure will be in effect Wednesday and Thursday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. A World War II memorial in Yoakum gets a makeover. The anti-tank gun was purchased by the VFW Post 2456 back in 1952, and it was donated to the city of Yoakum in 2001. The city unsuccessfully went through the bid process last year to find a contractor to refurbish the monument. The Yoakum American Legion offered the funding, and the Lower Colorado River Authority then stepped up to offer their services to perform the work needed to restore the cannon back to its original condition. Veterans say the purpose was not only to have the monument refurbished, but have it stand for something in the community. For the purpose of the project is not to just refurbish the cannon, but also have it stand for something. We wanted to remind all veterans who see it that their service was important. God bless all you. God bless America. Thank you. The cannon is located in the triangle between Huck Street and Business 77A in Yoakum for all to enjoy. Well, we started off this week on a hot note. Let's take a look outside at our forecast with First Warren Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Mac Perez. Mac, any cooler weather in the forecast or I, in the near future? I'm going to be the most popular guy in town. I'll tell you, we've got a cold front coming. Things are going to be looking really nice by the end of this week. As a matter of fact, uh, as soon as Wednesday night, as the first cold front of the season actually makes it through all this heat and humidity that we had uh, yesterday and today was going to go away. As a matter of fact, the frontal system is already right through North Texas in uh, Abilene. You remember I was telling you about all the hot weather in Abilene? It's 68 degrees there right now. We'll have more on that and more on the tropics coming up a little bit later on. Chana, back to you. All right, stay tuned. Well, two people were killed. Five others hurt after a mobile home collapsed. Several people were working to level the manufactured home in Brazoria County when it collapsed, trapping them. Five people were rescued. First responders used a chainsaw to cut through the floor to get to one of them. Four people were taken by helicopter to Houston area hospitals in critical condition. Another was taken to a hospital by ambulance and is in stable condition. A 17 year old boy and a 31 year old man were killed. After reports of Venezuelan gang members in El Paso, someone who runs a migrant shelter there is speaking out about whether there have been issues with the gang. Abierto Perez has more. As it specifically relates to the Opportunity Center for the Homeless, we have had no specific issues. Opportunity Center Deputy Director John Martin also told me federal funders and partners have trained organizations on both sides of the border regarding Tren de Aragua. He says his shelter knows how to identify the individuals who may be problematic for them, but they also deal with conflicts every day. I'm going to be quite honest with you. When you look at the men's shelter, we work with 100 men a night. Okay, you're going to have conflict. He says a staff has to react and be able to de-escalate any type of confrontations. Even though the Opportunity Center has not had problems with Tren de Aragua members, they see conflict with migrants or the homeless population often. But the direct answer to your question is that we've seen no specific incidents that we would say is related to a gang. Now that's not to say that we haven't had an individual within our building, but again, we focus on people. The owners of pit bulls that attacked and killed an 81 year old man have been sentenced to prison. On Friday, a judge sentenced Christian Moreno to 18 years in prison and Abilene Snyder to 15 years in prison. The couple took a plea deal to avoid a trial. Their defense attorneys were hoping for a lighter sentence. Instead, they nearly got the maximum sentence of 20 years. In February 2023, the dogs got loose from a property in San Antonio and fatally attacked the elderly man. His wife was also attacked by the dogs, but she survived. Well, remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, CrossroadsToday.com. While you're there, hit the like button and click the notification bell to stay uh, up to date on all of our news. So stay with us straight ahead on 25 News Now at 5. U.S. presidential politics playing out on the world stage as world leaders gather at the U.N. Also ahead, more free at-home COVID tests available as a new variant is on the rise.
Back. The man accused in an assassination attempt of former President Trump was in court today for a detention hearing. The judge ruled that Ryan Ruth will stay behind bars for now, citing the evidence in the case. Authorities say Ruth was armed with a rifle when he hid in the trees where Trump was golfing earlier this month in West Palm Beach, Florida. Prosecutors say a witness has a letter written by Ruth detailing an apparently planned assassination attempt on Trump. The letter also includes a $150,000 reward offer to anyone who could, quote, complete the job. World leaders are descending on the United Nations General Assembly in New York this week, and with several raging conflicts, stressed alliances, and a host of overseas threats, President Joe Biden and whoever becomes his successor are up against a litany of foreign crises. Here's Julia Benbrook with more. President Joe Biden is traveling to New York this week for the United Nations General Assembly. He will address the delegates on Tuesday. I think the president will challenge the United Nations by when we come together, we can solve world problems. The president will meet with leaders to discuss a wide range of topics, including working to find diplomatic solutions to a number of crises. We want to work to find peace. So we're putting all of our efforts behind peace and security, not just uh, in Gaza and Israel and Lebanon, but we're also focusing on Sudan. Uh, we're focusing on Ukraine. And as Biden remains busy with an intense stretch of diplomatic engagements, attention on the world stage is already shifting to Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Donald Trump as leaders prepare for the future. They're trying to measure out uh, Vice President Harris's foreign policy views, which aren't all that well known uh, at this point. And of course, what they do know about uh, former President Trump much of which has uh, the uh, traditional American allies deeply on edge. According to multiple U.S. officials, representatives for Harris and Trump are fielding requests from dozens of countries reaching out to get FaceTime with the candidates. Reporting in Washington, I'm Julia Benbrook. The new COVID variant XEC is on the rise just ahead of the fall and winter when many respiratory viruses circulate. So to get ready, the U.S. government is making more at-home COVID-19 tests available for free. Each household will be able to order a new round of four free at-home test kits. The new test kits will be available by the end of the month. The U.S. Department of Human Health reports more than 900 million test kits have been delivered through the program. Well, there's a new weapon against the flu that's now approved by the FDA. The agency gave the green light to an at-home version of the flu vaccine. And while it won't be available to help with this respiratory virus season, some experts hope not having to get a shot at a doctor's office or a pharmacy will encourage more people to get protected. Today's Health Minute has more on how this newly approved vaccine works. It's a first in the fight against flu. On Friday, the FDA approved the first needle-free influenza vaccine that can be administered at home. I think that's good news. I think the idea is to get people vaccinated and to get their immune system up. Flu mist is a nasal spray that's been used to protect against influenza in the U.S. since 2003. It's currently available with a prescription in pharmacies and other healthcare settings for people ages 2 to 49 who aren't pregnant. The manufacturer plans to make the vaccine available for self-administration through a third-party online pharmacy, which will prescribe and ship the vaccine after reviewing a screening and eligibility assessment. This option is expected to be available in time for the start of next year's respiratory virus season. It's very simple. It's basically once per each nostril to get the full dose um, for an adult. Dr. Jesse Bracamonte with Cleveland Clinic says this approval will help make it more convenient to protect against flu, but he says the vaccine contains a live but weakened version of the virus, so it's not for everybody. So there are certain conditions that are not able to take the flu mist, such as if you're on immune-related medications that suppress your immune system, you have HIV, some, and there's some particular immune-related issues that you'd have to talk to your physician or your clinician to make sure that that vaccine is right for you. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Well, it's been almost one month since I've been back here at 25 News Now. Don and I recently sat down for a brief chat about what I've been up to and my purpose for returning to the Anchor Desk. You can watch the full video by coming to our website, crossroadstoday.com.
Also a big thank you to the Victoria Advocate and Madison O'Hara for a very warm welcome back in the article they published this in this weekend's edition. Well, congratulations. You're all over the place there, Kashana. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Looks pretty good out there, but it's a little warm and quite humid. But boy, things are going to be getting into high gear. A, we've got a cold front with some rain coming. And then, boy, the stuff coming out of Florida, that's, that's going to be a major, major story. We'll talk about that. It's 94 right about now. Feels like 100. The winds are relatively light. It got up to 94, which uh, was supposed to be at about 89. Remember, now it's officially fall. We should be dropping temperatures. But uh, the hurricane uh, for Florida, boy, that's going to be a big one. We'll talk about that coming up after. Well, good afternoon, everyone. We have a few little guard variety showers rolling around the area. This is going to be a little bit more expansive tomorrow when the frontal system starts pushing down into our area. You, I'm not kidding. This You're going to feel this one. It's going to knock the temperatures down, and the night times are actually going to be cool. Uh, there you see the city right about there. We had a few little showers sort of roll around. The only activity right now is up toward the Hallett area. Yes, the frontal system came in over the weekend through the panhandle. Uh, it brought some heavy rain down to the Dallas-Fort Worth area. That's sort of settled down, but it is much cooler up here. Places like Abilene are in the 60s and 70s, uh, as opposed to the 110s that were just about a month ago. Center of the storm is right here, the front down here. It's sort of slowed down, but this is eventually going to push all the way down into our region as high pressure comes in behind it. And that is going to be a, uh, a very important thing for us for a few factors. First of all, you can see how tomorrow we'll be in the uh, low 90s. OK, that's not bad. Uh, look at that. There being the 80s tomorrow with the clear, dry air uh, and we'll stay there until uh, about the weekend. But as I have been telling you, we talked about this last week and we said, here's what's happening. Here's where it's going. And that is exactly where it's going. So at this point in time, they're calling it tropical cyclone number nine. But this will likely become Helene by tonight. And then it becomes a major problem once it gets into the Gulf of Mexico. Why? Because you see right here, that's a category one. You see right here, that's a category three. Three is 110 miles an hour. And that's Apalachicola right there. Tallahassee is right about there. So the, the, uh, the big uh, bend here of Florida is going to get pounded. And not only that, but of course, you know, Tampa, all Clearwater, all this area, the uh, west coast of Florida, is going to be pounded by a huge hurricane by the end of this week. They need to start moving out today uh, and getting ready for it. And of course, all these people need to move to higher ground or at least away from the coastal areas, which are going to take the brunt of this. Uh, but this is going to be, at this point in time, the biggest hurricane of the season. 
uh, and all the computer models are really pick, uh, picking it up as it, it is likely to strengthen. Now, here's the rain forecast all the way through about Thursday. You can see how here's the storm coming up with the heavy rains, heavy rains, heavy rains. And so, yes, we've got uh, probably 10 to 15 inches of rain. And then in this area, probably 110 mile an hour winds. Uh, you know, Florida, is, uh, they've been through it before, but this is the one that they really got to get ready for, you know, because so many people move to the coast. They want to be by the water. Everybody wants to be by the water. And then they realize, oh my gosh, these storms are coming in. So this is going to be a huge problem. You can see that through Thursday, our rain chance will be today and tomorrow, or not uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. Then the front comes through and actually we've got some beautiful weather. Other side of the world, unbelievable. Uh, just, uh, just south of Acapulco, another hurricane is coming in tonight. It's called John at 100 mile an hour winds. And you remember Otis blew Acapulco to pieces just a couple years ago. So it's uh, unbelievable. Uh, partly cloudy tomorrow, a 90 in Port Lavaca. We're going to be looking at 93 in Cuero. We've got uh, warm and humid weather for two days. Front comes in. You're going to be dancing in the streets as we get to Thursday with the beautiful weather, uh, cool nights and sunny mild days. That's your forecast. Reminding everybody we do have a QR code. Love for you to scan that, put crossroads today on your phone. Here's Shauna. All right, cold front. We like those words. Well, coming up next on 25 News Now at 5, we'll take a look at your stocks. Plus, the U.S. is facing a potential government shutdown as funding talks intensify. Positive day today for stocks. The Dow closed up 61 points. The S&P 500 closed up 16 points and the Nasdaq up 26 points. Oil is down 36 cents, closing at $70.65 per barrel. Boeing has issued a new offer to 33,000 striking machinist union members. The revised offer includes an immediate 12% raise and a 30% increase over the four year contract. Before the strike, union members rejected an offer of 11% upfront and 25% overall. Another issue is retirement benefits. Boeing is offering higher 401k contributions, but the workers want the pension restored. They gave it up after the 2008 strike when Boeing threatened to move production. The union hasn't commented on this new offer. The threat of a government shutdown is looming over the U.S. after a six-month funding extension failed in the House last week. Now, Speaker Mike Johnson has a new proposal that could gain support from Democratic lawmakers. 
His plan would fund the government until December 20th and include additional funding for the Secret Service, but it leaves out the controversial SAVE Act aimed at preventing non-citizens from voting. Democratic leader Hakeem Jeffries says Congress is on a bipartisan path to avoid a shutdown. Meanwhile, former President Trump has called for a shutdown if the SAVE Act is not passed into law. Well, stay with us. When we come back, we'll take one last look at your forecast for the week. Plus, we will meet Pesto the Penguin, the Internet's newest adorable sensation. And here's a look at what's coming up on World News Tonight, right after 25 News Now at 5. This week, escalating violence in the Middle East, plus the battle for the critical swing states as the sprint to Election Day heats up. World News Tonight with David Muir, the most watched newscast on television. All right, take a look at this. A baby penguin is making a big <laughs> splash on the internet. Hey there, buddy. Pesto, a nine-month-old, 50-pound king penguin has what? gone viral. 50 <laughs> yeah. pounds? 50 pounds. He's a baby. <laughs> at nine months old. Yeah, he's, he's a big one. Well, it all started with a gender reveal clip from Sea Life Melbourne Aquarium, where Pesto lives. Uh, zookeepers say that Pesto is now well on the way to adulthood and has even started losing some of his baby feathers. He's so <laughs> cute and fluffy looking. Oh, yeah. The zoo says swimming lessons from his dad will likely be starting soon. So he definitely stands out among all of the other penguins. Well, <laughs> the, 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 the brown stuff, that's the baby feathers right. you're talking about. And, and he's going to lose that and he's going to turn into that beautiful yeah. emperor, that penguin with that yellow uh, stripe on their head. but. 50 pounds and he's a baby. <laughs> he looks about twice the size of all the other ones. He's, but, as they say, it's a yeah, big baby. But he's been putting on a show and you become bet. a viral sensation. Well, folks, for us, we've got uh, two days of uh, humid, uh, warm weather and a chance for showers for Tuesday and Wednesday. But by Thursday, you're going to be so happy. You might, I don't know that you'll need the sweater, but you're, you're really going to enjoy the weather. Low humidity, the first uh, nights that'll be down into the mid 60s and uh, sunny mild days. So yes, we are turning the corner 
on that old summer and it's pretty much gone now that fall is here. Uh, that being said, uh, we have to keep reminding you that there is going to be a major hurricane uh, to Florida by the Friday time period and it's going to be bad. Uh, we'll certainly be updating you on it, but that will be Hurricane Helene. All right, we'll definitely be keeping an eye on that this week. So thanks for being here. We'll see you back here at 6. World News Tonight is next.